Hey, hey everyone, it's Tara Lynn, the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat. Welcome. Tonight we are painting Lovebirds. This is a really bright and bold painting, uh, so it'll be a lot of fun. This has some really loose and freeing brush strokes, so feel free to kind of take your own spin on things and play with the colors. This one will turn out pretty no matter how it goes. Um, before we begin, I will talk about the supply list um, and then we'll get started. If you're here live with me, feel free to say hello in the comments if you want to. Um, I know a lot of my supporters will watch on the replay. Feel free to say hello on the replay as well and if you don't mind i would love it if you'd give my youtube page a follow and a like that's super helpful for creators um all right so let's get started uh the first thing i'm going to talk about is the paint colors and for this you really just need a wide variety of colors um these lovebirds have a lot of yellows and orange and green so those colors are the most important um, the background colors you can kind of play with but i'll tell you what i've got out and we can go from there i keep bumping my camera so i'm just going to give this a little scooty scoot so that i don't make earthquakes there we go all right so paint colors let's talk about paint colors i've got black and white i use those for almost everything i've got a sap green which is just a grassy green sometimes it's called green oxide uh, but i will be using that if you don't have a grassy green or a green oxide you can use a phthalo green and add some yellow and that will help um, i've got yellow um, so i've got a bright yellow and a deep yellow Again, this painting is flexible. You can use either or or both. I've got a red, an orange, a phthalo blue. If you don't have phthalo blue, cobalt blue would be fine as well. I've got magenta and violet. And for a fun, bright pop, I've got neon, neon orange. All right, so I'm just going to organize these, get them out of my way so that they're not falling over on my painting. All right, we are working with acrylic paint. So in addition to the paint, you're going to want to have a plate or a palette to put your paints on, paper towels to dry off your brush, and some water to clean your brush. A variety of paint brushes. I most often use small, medium, and large flat brushes and small, medium, and large round brushes. But you can use whatever you have. Um, a lot of times painting is just mark making or filling in the space with colors. Today we're not doing any fancy um, techniques or paint strokes, so um, use what you have and what you love. I will oftentimes use a hair dryer um, or a heat gun to speed along the drying process. Um, acrylic paint does not like heat, so if you've got a low heat or a cool setting, that is helpful. Um, it's optional, but it can be helpful to, to speed things along. And then, so I've got my, my outline here, I'm going to be painting on a 12 by 16. It fits nicely on my desk. Um, can still be seen really well on camera. And then I've got transfer paper. And I've already got my design transferred. So if you have not done that, now is the time to do that. And while you're working on that, I am just going to go over my design quickly with a Sharpie so that you can see it nice and bright on screen. And whenever I provide an outline, this is just to help you with the shapes, um, especially when we're painting anything uh, that's natural, like birds or flowers or uh, 
animals or, you know, whatever. There is natural variation, right? Not all birds are the same. They don't have their markings. You know, they, they are all in a similar pattern. For example, lovebirds have a, a very distinct pattern and color, but it varies from bird to bird, just like humans look different from person to person. And um, the same is true for flowers and trees and all that stuff. So there's natural variation in the size and in the patterns and all of that stuff. So use this as a guide, but don't feel like you have to stick to it. So I use my outlines kind of free and loose. And one thing I want to stress is that it's totally okay to paint using um, the help of an outline. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't like drawing. It stresses me out and that's not what I want to feel <laughs> when I'm making art. Um, so my perspective is I kind of already drew this once when I, I made the sample and made the outline. I don't want to draw it again. I don't enjoy it. And, and I'm okay with that. I've come to terms with that. So um, I don't feel like it's cheating. Painting and drawing are two totally separate skills. And one of them I totally love. And the other one I could do without. Um, I know a lot of people feel differently about that. And that's fine. That's having different opinions is what makes this world a really fun place. Um, but as for me and my outlines, I like to use them. Um, a lot of times, uh, if I'm not directly copying, you know, I'll, I'll use outlines just to help me identify shapes and things like that. So it is a tool just like anything else you use in art. If you use it too much, um, you lose originality. If you use it just enough, it's there to help you. That's how I look at it. Um, anyway, enough about that. All right, so get your design on there. Uh, before I get into the painting, I will mention that one of the reasons I love using YouTube is that you can pause and um, rewind, fast forward. Um, you can change the settings and make it go double speed or anything like that. So please work along at your own pace. Um, if you ever need to pause the video to, um, work on what you're doing that is absolutely fine do not feel like you have to, to speed along to catch up with me and if i'm going too slow um feel free to turn me on fast or whatever you want to do um, make this work for you um, i will mention uh i'm using a, a broken canvas today this is one that i had in storage and it just had a big chunk missing out of it so that's why I have a piece of tape here. I'm hoping just to cover that up. But sometimes when I make these samples, I don't, I don't want to waste my canvas. All right. So for this background, <clears throat> um, I'm really just going to start to blend in some fun colors. And I'm going to use a nice big brush. And when I apply the paint, um, I'm not going to over mix it. I want a very choppy background. That's what this, that's what my sample um, was designed like. And I will also mention too, this sample up in the corner here. Um, and a lot of times I'll do this with my samples. Sometimes I will sit down to paint them, but this one here I created on my iPad. I, I created using Procreate and I used the, the paintbrush tools and I love doing that. Um, but this, this one up here in the corner um, is a digital painting, so it may look a little different. Um, we're going to take the, you know, the same idea and the colors and the shapes, and we're going to make a real painting with actual paint, and so there's going to be different texture and that sort of thing. Um, so don't let that freak you out. Um, but before I begin today, um, I'm going to get all of my colors on my palette here. And I don't always do that, uh, but I want to do it today because even starting right from this background, there is a lot of lovely color. I'm going to skip the neon because I'm going to save that for the last pops of color on my burbs. Uh, 
already got that one. Some black over here and some white. All right, so I've just got all my all my pretty colors on here. Now I know, looking at my background and my sample, that the center to the right, like this portion here, starting kind of right around the middle over on this side, is a little bit lighter than the surrounding um, area. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of white here in the middle and kind of around this parrot. And if I call them a parrot, lovebirds or parrots, sometimes they call things funny, funny names while we're painting. I'm an artist. I'm not good at other stuff like <laughs> like keeping my camera. No, but seriously. Um, anyway. All right, background. Focus. All right, so let's see. I'm going to start with my upper left, and I'm going to mix my blue with just a pinch of white. I'm going to lighten it a little bit, but I don't want it too light. All right, and I'm just going to kind of push in some blue up here. And then I've got some blue down here as well. Now, I'm not worried too much about these outlines so much as I can continue to see them. All right, I'm going to take this blue and a pinch of green because I don't want to grab a turquoise. Um, and I'm going to just want a little bit of green up here. There's not much green at the bottom, so that's fine. All right. Green and yellow, I'm going to make kind of a lime green. And I'm going to switch some lime green up here. This painting is all about patches of color. That's it. There's no magic formula. So just pop in some color, wipe off your brush, and then we're going to move right on to the next set of colors. All right. After that blue area, we're going to switch to magentas and purple. So I'm going to get some of that green and blue out of my brush. And I'm going to come in with some magenta. Now I'm not going to blend. But I'm just going to add some caps of color. There's also a bit up in here. A little bit in between that bird's tail and down here. Now, I know up here the magenta gets a little bit lighter. And there's a little bit of light redness up here. So I'm just going to pull some of that color in up here. Wipe off my brush. Now I don't want my green and my purples to mix, but I do have some purples going on in here. So I'm going to dip right into my violet and pop in violet smear of red. Over here, a lot of this really is true magenta um, in different shades, but there's a little violet down by the bottom, and so I'm just going to pull a little bit of purple in there. Remember, I'm trying not to blend, so just dabbing colors. And this is the first layer of our background. Do not worry about making this perfect. It does not have to be. We're going to come back through and kind of add a fun second layer. All right, between here and here, the pink gets a little more red toned. So I'm just going to add some red to my brush and kind of blend this light color out. Down here in this corner, purple, magenta, and blue. All 
over in this corner, we've got some fun light purples and blues. So I'm gonna lighten up that purple. Smush a little bit of that. In. And then over here, we know we're going from magenta to those blues and purples. So we can kind of transition that way. And if at any point you don't like the colors that I'm using, change it. You don't have to do the same background as me. It's just background. You can have your background any color you want. Up here in this corner, a lot of these shades are warm tones, so reds, oranges, and yellows. And I don't want to mix purples with those colors because those won't mix really well. So I'm just going to try. Um, I'm going to add a little magenta right here at the blending point because magenta does play well with reds and oranges. And then up here, I'm going to tap in a little bit of white. And then I'm going to go into some oranges. My reds and my yellows. Now, even though I cautioned you not to overmix, I overmix my background. I can tell you right now that this is more blended mix than I had intended, and that's okay because I'm going to add more layers. The first thing I want to do is just make sure I've got those colors laid down. And like I said, they can be a little different. They don't have to be exactly the same as the sample. We just want some layers. All right, so this is one of those parts of the video where I do want this background to dry before I continue. Normally, I would move on to another part of the painting, such as the love of birds, but I really want to get this background finished before I layer upwards because I don't want to have any clear edges or clean outlines around these birds. Um, so what I'm going to encourage you to do is either get your hair dryer or heat gun and dry your painting or pause the video and go get a drink, take a bathroom break, stretch, um, and then maybe come back in two or three minutes when your painting is a little more dry and we'll work on it then. But I'm gonna go ahead and mute my um, speaker. I'm gonna dry this for just a few moments and then we'll continue.
All right, now listed in your supply list um, was a palette knife, and this is optional. So I am going to work with a palette knife, and I'm just going to kind of smear some colors on here. If you don't have a palette knife, do not stress about it. Um, there are two other ways that you can smear colors. Number one, with your fingers. So if you're not afraid to just tap in some color, that's really easy to do. Um, you can just pick it up with your finger and just kind of here in some beautiful um, marks. Fingers are great for mark making. Um, the other thing you can do is just use a brush. Just make some nice big chunky strokes. So it's totally up to you. I'll probably use a combination between my palette knife and my fingers. So um, if you don't have a palette knife, do not stress about that. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of move through here um, and I'm gonna mix up some fun, um, maybe secondary colors, tertiary colors, and just blend them in. So up here, I kind of want to lighten this a little bit up in my sample. I've got some nice bright light greens. And so I'm just going to use a small brush to mix the color that I want. So for example, a nice limey green. And you could scoop that up with your palette brush, or you can just kind of Smear it on here. And then just come through and give it a nice, nice smush. Now likewise, if you um, are using your finger, you can do the same thing. Just get some paint on your finger and kind of make that fun smush mark. Works the same way, right? There's no right or wrong. We're just tapping in some different colors. And I've got some blues up here as well. So maybe I'll just mix a lighter color or two. Now see, I said palette knife and then I, I started to get my fingers dipped in this paint and it's fun. And now this is what I want to do. I'm a sucker for making a mess with my hands. I really am.
All right, take as much time as you need to get the background the way that you want it. If you need to, pause the video. I am going to go ahead and dry this again, and then we're going to move on to laying out the color of the branch and the birds. All right, I don't need the entire painting to be um, super dry. I just want to make sure that when I fill in these spaces, I'm not going to pull in any additional color. All right, so um, I'm going to start out with a clean, medium sized flat brush. And I'm going to fill in uh, the first thing the branch here. Most of this branch um, is kind of a mix of purple and red. And that's going to make um, what I would call an alizarin crimson or kind of a burgundy color. And so, to be honest, um, since this painting has so much variation, I can mix right here on the canvas purple and red. And I don't even care if it's different amounts. So some areas can be more purple, some areas can be more red. That's fine.
All right, once I have kind of this base coat of this on here, I'm going to give this just a moment to dry. It doesn't need to be super dry. It's just dry enough that we can kind of layer on top of it. So I'm just going to brush it with some air for a moment. Now purples and reds are transparent colors. Most of the pigments used um, in red especially has transparency. So I definitely want to layer upwards with this. All right, so this is where I'm gonna start getting some darker tones. So I'm gonna take some purple with a pinch of black. And anywhere I've got some dark shadows on this branch, I'm going to add this mixture, which I just used way too much black, but I do want it to be pretty dark, so. All right, so under the bird, we've got a shadow. So big, heavy brush strokes, adding in that shadow. Under this bird, we've got some shadow. Big, heavy, chunky brush strokes underneath this bird. All right, that darkens it a little bit. Now I'm going to add some red to this mixture which isn't going to lighten it too much, but it'll change the tone. And I can add just a little bit of this kind of here and there. All right, more purple, more red. So we're just getting real chunky with it. Getting chunky with it. All right, next I'm gonna go for some magenta. Around some of these darker areas, I'm gonna pull some magenta tones. Be careful not to move too much of that dark around. Remember, choppy brush strokes go in different directions if you need to, to help you with that. Now I'm going to go into a little orange. Now this orange is probably going to get dirty when we pull it in here, but I'm going to pull in some orange. Oops, cleaning off my brush each time. So choppy orange across the top there. Maybe a little orange right in here. All right, on top of that orange, I'm gonna pull some yellow. So this is kind of where there would be maybe a reflection or a glare on that branch. So we're just giving the impression of a branch. Don't overthink it. And then you can add in just some other darker tones here and there if you want to, like over on the edge, maybe some some blues or purples. The more colors, the more interesting it is. But the branch really is not the focal point, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, I'm going to switch to a round brush and I'm going to make a gray blue. Before I do that, I'm going to get some of these brushes cleaned and out of my water.
All right, switch into a round brush. All right, we're going to mix kind of a, a light grayish blue for the feet. And so I'm going to start with gray. So I'm going to mix a little white with a little black. I'm kind of going for like a medium. gray. And I'm going to add some blue. This tone is a little dark for my liking, so I'm going to pull some off to the side um, and mix some white with it versus trying to mix in all that color. My white, for whatever reason, is not very strongly pigmented, so I need to use more white than I should have to. For very little part of this painting. All right. And this brush is so completely saturated, I'm not going to be able to use it. But um, what we're basically going to do here, I'm going to fill in the feet. Completely first. With this color here. Right, and on these light gray feet, we've got some pure white highlights. So I'm going to come through a little highlight by the ankle, and then on the front of the foot there, there's a little highlight that shows up over here. And on the top of this foot, maybe a little bit right there. We need to adjust this foot just a little bit. Yep. All right, now I'm going to go in with some blue and just add kind of some color by dabbing this blue in. This just gives a little variation to those feet. And I'm not mixing so much as I'm dotting. I'm just kind of speckling it in there. I'm going to take a little black and just kind of add a shadow underneath that foot and clean up that foot um, to make it look like it's gripping that tree. So 
So just a little black shadow. I don't know what I did here, but I added an extra part to that foot. <laughs> so I'm just going to take that off. I don't know where that came from. All right. Poor guy had an extra, he had an extra toe on there. All right, so those are the feet. Again, not really the focal point of this painting, so don't stress about it. All right, we are gonna lay down some color on these birds. And a lot of this color, um, we're gonna start with a base layer and then we're gonna layer upwards. So um, for the bellies and the face of the birds, we're gonna layer with our orange right from the tube, okay? Um, for most of the feathers, we're going to use our sap green. Um, and just for a few of these feathers, I'm going to mix half green, half blue, and make a turquoise. So using my flat brush, I'm going to do the orange first since I don't have to mix that. Um, and just laying in color. So this is our, our very bottom color here. Again, remember when we're doing these birds, this outline is a suggestion not a hard rule this these are abstract the birds are not scientific drawings by any means okay we stop right in front of the foot that's kind of where his little leggy would come down so we're going to stop right there Same thing for this guy. So we stop right by that little foot. I'm just gonna do this whole thing in orange. Starting up at the crown, about halfway past his eye, and I'm just pulling that color downward. All right, we're going to move from orange to our green. Remember, I'm just filling in colors, so I'm going to start where I left off with that orange. Pull the green around the back. Now, where I'm going to stop, I'll show you right about here. Down here, we've got his little leg and foot, and that is green. But I'm going to leave some of these feathers so that I can do those in teal. And so we kind of want to envision the same thing with this guy. Um, he's going to have some teal feathers down here at the bottom. Um, but down here where his leg and his bottom feathers are, this is green. You get reference the sample.
And when I'm happy with that green, I'm going to mix a little green and blue together to make kind of a teal turquoisey color. And that's what I'm going to fill in the rest of these feathers with. All right, so this gets rid of most of the white on the canvas, which is kind of what we want. I am going to dip in this gray blue that I made earlier before it dries up, and you should do the same. And I'm going to fill in the beak with this gray blue, and then we're going to darken it. But this is kind of the base color there. All right, then I'm going to add a pinch of black in there, darken it up. Pull some darker color on the top. Darken it up again. And then most of the bottom is almost black. I just got a smaller paintbrush here to help me with that. So I'm gonna get that almost black in there and then darken it up in some areas with just a little black. I don't want it all to be black. And then I can smear a little highlight in here on the top because it would be highlighted on the beak where the light hits it. And I like to kind of follow that curve All right, so that is the beak. All right, again, we're going to be mixing some colors and applying it towards the bird. You can use your palette knife, you can use a paintbrush, or you can use your finger. Um, so don't stress about this. What I'm going to do is apply the color in patches and then kind of blend it with my fingers. So first I'm going to dip into some red and right where the beak and the crown meet, I'm going to tap in a little bit of red up here. Same thing right here. A little bit of red, maybe a little around the eye. Okay. Wipe that off. And we've already got this bright orange, but I'm going to put some next to my red just for blendability. And then I'm going to go into my yellows. And I've got some yellow up top. And this one, there's not quite as much. There's more kind of around here.
All right, so working section by section, I've got this orange and, and reds in here. I'm just gonna kind of smear it a little bit. Give it a blended look. I can see those finger marks. Oops, got a little my black in there. That's all right. Just going to pick it up, wipe it off, mix it in, whatever you want to do. All right, around the chest of this bird, there's lots of yellows. So I'm gonna get some yellows and oranges and just kind of put that in here. Over on this bird, lots of orange. So my deeper yellow, and that orange, and a little bit of that red. This guy's got some red down here. So remember, even though these are the same birds, there's variation in their colors. And don't overthink it. You can just kind of play with it and have fun. Um, short little strokes with your finger, with your brush. Now and again, I'll just turn my finger in a different direction so the, the marks don't all go the same way. Once you got the paint on there, you can kind of lighten it up in areas that you want to. And then we're going to do the same thing now with the green. But in order to do my green, I need to mix up some different colors. Um, so we're going to have our sap green, which was our background color. We already have that. I'm going to mix up a yellow green. So I had that earlier, but it got all blended. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that yellow green again. And just for the sake of not wasting, I'm going to wipe off my brush with some of this so I can mix my next color. Um, and then I'm going to mix kind of my, my teal. So that's a blue and green and maybe just a little white to brighten it a little bit. Right, and again, just for the sake of not wasting, I'm just going to smear that on there. All right, so we're going to tap in areas of this color. So up by the crown, I want to have some yellow. 
And I kind of want this so that I'm not pulling that orange into the green up here. Okay. And I'm going to go with my lighter green. And you can put both colors even on the paintbrush and just kind of smear them in there. And you can move your darker green. Again, I'm just plopping on color here. And the wings, we've got some yellow, so I'm going right into the yellow. Got some teal on the next wing. Back to this green. A lot of this is just a matter of applying this thick, fun color and kind of letting your fingers or that palette knife just smear it out. And then the only thing really to keep in mind as you're doing this is look at the brush strokes on the sample. Are they big or are they little? Which direction do they go in? That's the kind of stuff that you want to pay attention to. So you get all these fun colors on here and then you play. All right, so up here, I'm just kind of filling in space. In the back, I've got a little bit of blue in there. Over here, I've got some long, thin strokes. Now over here, there's some short feathers, so I'm going to tap those in. And as long as you're following kind of the general shape of these feathers, You'll get a nice abstract bird. Now over here, short, short little feather strokes.
All right, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, remember, we're not going for an exact replica. We are adding in some fun paint strokes and just having a good time with it. Now, up around the eye, a lot of this has some white in there. So I'm just gonna zap this with a heat gun so I'm not pulling a lot of this orange and red. All right, now I'm gonna get, I want a, gr a really light gray. I don't want a pure white. So I've got some, this gray mixture from earlier. I'm just going to lighten it quite a bit. If you don't even want to, if you just want to start with white and add the tiniest pinch of gray, that's fine as well. I probably need to switch to a smaller brush at this point. All right. So what I'm going to do is just around the eye, there's this little white patch. I'm going to fill that in. Now compared to the colors, this is pretty light. That's because we're going for impression of a white. But right now we're adding in that base color, that shadow color. These birds have a little mask around their eyes. Now in the center, right now, just fill that in with black. Well, I've got my black, I can add a fun little curve on that beak. Maybe a little more of this darker color if it needs it. All right, and then I'm going to go right into my bright white. And then I'm going to kind of smear in some bright white in there. I don't want to completely get rid of that gray, but I want that gray to be the shadow of this color. So I will lift this up closer to the camera. So you can see there's gray and white in there. All right, I'm gonna mix some blue into this gray, just a pinch. And then in this blackness, I'm gonna smear kind of a little bit of this gray blue because there's always highlights and reflections in the eye. And then we need to give kind of a bright white with the, the smallest brush you have, just give it a little, little reflection in there. And that's what makes that bird look more alive. You can use a very dark gray or a black down here just to add little claws on the end of the feet. I'm touching some color in there if you want to. But that's it from here on out. It's pretty much just finishing touches. And I really like how these guys turned out. Um, very vibrant, very colorful, very rich, deep um, texture, which I love in a painting. Um, so look at your painting and kind of play with it at this point. See where there's other patches of color. Are there things that you can enhance? Um, so for example, this guy over here does have a little yellow on his back in places that I missed. 
do you need to make some of these others more apparent? You can tap in some color. Play with your painting. Make it yours. Have a good time. Um, anytime you go abstract, I always have people tell me it's harder to go abstract than it is to paint realistically and it it absolutely is it's hard to be free and loose and just let the colors kind of decide where they want to be um so at this point you know once i get these colors down and things are a little crazy i go back and just kind of touch it up and my touch-ups are going to be a lot different from your touch-ups because you know we're working with a different different brushes, different paints, different perspective, different brush strokes, all that stuff. So never be afraid to add your own personal finishing touches. You know, if you want to add some gentle outlines, you can absolutely do that as well. All right, what I would encourage you to do is if you have not already, and I don't, I'm not going to do this on camera, but paint your edges and then sign your piece. Make it your own, claim it. I would love for you to also share it with me. You can do that by tagging paint, rinse, repeat at hashtag paint, rinse, repeat or at paint, rinse, repeat. And that will allow me to see your beautiful painting on social media. So feel free to do that. And then another way that you can share is by joining my free Facebook group. The address is right there on the screen. Um, but you can also just do a search um, for Facebook, on facebook.com for paint, rinse, repeat, um, and then click on groups. Um, but you can type this address on facebook.com slash groups slash paint, rinse, repeat, and that will take you directly there. Um, it is free to join and you can share any paintings that you create with me as well as paintings that you create uh, on your own and I can't wait to see them. So please consider that. And then I would love to talk about my supporter membership. My supporters get each and every painting included in their membership for $9.99 a month. So you have a variety, a wide variety of paintings to choose from. Um, you can participate live with me, or a lot of my supporters like to participate in their own time as a replay. Um, that is all included. Um, it's only $9.99 a month. It's run right through my Facebook page. There's no expenses to do that. And you can get information at the address below. Again, you can find information on my Facebook page as well. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I can't wait to see your beautiful lovebirds. Make sure you share with me and stay creative, art friends. Have a good night.